Hi everybody, I'm Bud Churchward. Welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at a segment from our recent amateur radio club meeting. The Mount Baker Amateur Radio Club has a digital group, and we like to get together once a month. It's kind of a social uh, show-and-tell gathering. And lately, we've been doing it on Zoom. In this video, we're going to see what one of our friends in Canada has been up to. He's been playing around with the ESP32 cam modules and doing some interesting things with them. Take a look. Okay. Um, Deed, why don't we start with your presentation? I'm very curious about these, uh, these Wi-Fi gadgets. Thank you. Yep. Uh, okay, I should be sharing this this screen now yeah we see it okay so as i said this is a, this started out being a two-hour presentation and i don't think i want to do that so basically what i've done is i've taken this little gadget which is an esp32 cam uh it's out of china and there's the camera module uh, and it the ribbon cable uh clips into this thing here this is the back side of it. There's the ESP32 chip. And uh, that's uh, basically what I've done is I've taken and put four of those around my my house in various places. And I'm at this point, I'm basically just experimenting with them. Uh, I've got one which, if you can see me in the camera there, uh, there's one like this that's just being run by a, a uh, lithium ion battery. And it'll run that for a, roughly four hours. And I haven't done any <clears throat> power control on it. So I think I could probably get that probably up to probably 24 hours with a little bit of luck. And then with a solar panel on it, I should be able to get longer. So those are the, the uh, the cameras, and I'll take a, so if we look here, this is live. It's looking, I've got four cameras, as I said, and this is looking at me in my office as I speak to you. Change the camera, change it to camera two. And this is my ham shack slash tool room slash work, work room. And you can see down here, there's the DigiPi monitor, and there's a radio, the head of a radio there, and under the desk is 12 hour supply for all this nonsense. Change to another camera, we'll pick up this one. This is looking at my front driveway. As you can see, it's got dark, and somebody should bring in the recycling bins. <clears throat> and camera four is the portable one. So when I set it down there, I set it down upside down. So that's the other half of my office over there. These guys are about, as I say, they come from China. Uh, you pro I'm, I've <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. I programmed them with uh, the Arduino IDE, but you could program them different ways if you want to. And there's the uh, FTDI device that gives me a USB interface into, into it. So, and you've got to hook it up like that. And then I can program it via the Arduino IDE. 590, 598 plus shipping from China. That's Canadian dollars. So it's like 20%, 25% less than that in US dollars. Hmm. And uh, what happens when it takes a picture is it immediately uploads the picture to my server. So when you're looking at these pictures here, you're looking at them off my web server, which is 
somewhere in Toronto. It's a virtual machine somewhere in Toronto. So it, it takes and grabs the photos, uploads them there. And there's a bunch of PHP that is drawing these various pictures and showing you the, the, the pictures. And I think that's about it, unless there's questions. What's the uh, maximum resolution of the camera? Quite a bit larger than this. Uh, let's see. It's here somewhere. I think in this code, somewhere around there. So I've got it down at uh, 640 by 480, I think, or 800 by 600. Uh, let's just take a look, quick look at this. Uh, it's not telling me the. 800 yeah, by 800 by 600. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but the the max resolution is uh, probably 1024 by 768. Mm -hmm. uh, you might be able to get away with this if you're not in a hurry. I purposely made it small because I'm uploading them fairly frequently to my server, and it gives me enough. Uh, I basically put this together kind of as a security camera. Uh, if I ever get a chance to cross the border again and, and go down to Phoenix and visit Chris, um, uh, I might want to have some cameras looking at my house. And that's what I bought it, bought them for, and I'm putting them together. Right now, they're a work in progress. But this gives me, you know, if you come back to uh, looking at this and change it to the camera that's looking at my driveway and pick some time pretty decent resolution you're going to see anything that uh, that's going on there mm -hmm. uh, this is the mount by the way or the container which is why Chris was joking with me the other day uh, he says why you want to buy a 3d printer you run out of pill bottles so <laughs> I've just drilled this small hole in here, shoved the uh, the lens in there. So it's a bit of a friction fit and then behind it, I've got a bit of foam that's holding it in place. And then this whole pill bottle is wrapped in saran wrap. So this is, it's not, it's waterproof or more or less waterproof. And this is just duct seal. So that cable that was sticking out of that, that's just to provide power to it? Is that That's right? just power. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, the uh, communication is via Wi-Fi. And it's pretty decent. Uh, and let me go back to this picture. I, I haven't experimented with it yet, but I intend to because I've got some spots that you can see right there. This is the Wi-Fi antenna, printed circuit, but there's an external antenna that you can click on, you know, put on there. And then you just have to put a... 2.5 gigahertz antenna on it. And you've got to cut a little trace here and do a bit of soldering. And I'll hire my wife to do that because she she can actually see. <laughs> is the is the Wi-Fi code hackable? Could it be put into an Arden network? Uh, well, the, the Wi-Fi code is in the libraries and it's downloaded. So you and it's all, all this stuff's pretty much open source. So you could probably do whatever you wanted to with it. Uh, so Arden is, that's a, uh, I don't know what that is. It's kind of a, a adaptation of OpenWRT. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't see why not. If it, I mean, right now, this thing's talking to OpenWRT. So, uh, you know, to a Wi-Fi that's being run run by OpenWRT. So, I mean, it's I don't see any particular reason why uh, you couldn't put put that in there. The price point of this thing is amazing. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, I, I these prices are a few years old, but uh, 
but this this 598 price you want to look at because uh, the 361 you see the 361 is without the camera. Uh, that's this guy here with just this without the camera. So 598 is the is the price for with that in the camera. Um, oh, I see I see it does uh, Bluetooth as well. The ESP32 does yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I haven't used Bluetooth on it. So but, when you, uh, if you, if you want to change your uh, Wi-Fi um, SSID or password, do you need to go back to the Arduino? And yes, set and that recompile in? it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is, uh, well, you, there are ways around it. Uh, I've got another one of these things that that uh, it's uh, it's driving a bunch of uh, NeoPixel lights, and it moves around. So if it can't get a Wi-Fi connection, what it does is it builds its own station and sits there waiting for you to connect to it and then give you the give it the credentials for whatever Wi-Fi you want it to use. And so it is a library that you that I imported and set that up and away it goes. Okay. So if you follow that, it's just uh, you don't have to recompile to do that. Mm -hmm. The other way, other way I've done it is back when I was when we actually got to get out of the house and do demonstrations uh, is I had it walk through a series of six different SSIDs and passwords. So it would try one. If it worked, it was fine. If it didn't, it would try the next and just keep going through the known ones. And that worked pretty good, too. OK, good, good. So I haven't uh, done that with these, but uh, it's uh, 802.11, it, or it's uh, 2.4 gigahertz. It's not 5 gigahertz, is it? No, it's, yeah, it's 2.4. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and as far as I know, like I've got passwords on these things, so that if, uh, like you can look at that URL there. If you go to that, it should question you for a password or request a password. Uh, notice, but I'm not doing it securely, so you could hack it. And these devices, as far as I know, there are no uh, SSL libraries for it yet. Hmm. So if that's a concern. Uh, well, are you commanding it to take a picture, or is it doing it on uh, a time interval or something? It's time interval. If you look up here, uh, I said there's the, so uh, I had this taking a picture every 15 minutes or every 10 minutes, but then when it got dark, I moved it down to an hour. So this is capture interval in seconds and it's all driven by the camera. So I just download this data into the camera. So, and update it and it shoves that piece of data that you just saw go by quickly into the camera. So the camera now knows it wants to take a picture every 3,600 seconds, but it's going to check to see if I change that every 30 seconds. And it does have a flash to it, I see. It does have a flash. It's just a little LED. Uh, let me turn this on on this other camera. Uh, and see if this works. I haven't played with it recently. Uh, yeah. So is it is it basically just taking a photo as a JPEG file and then FTPing it to you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm not FTPing it, but uh, I'm, I'm using SSH. Okay. To upload it. The code is, and if you're. Yeah, it just flashed. Don't know if you noticed it there, but Let's see if I can set that where. Kudos on your your uh, commenting. Yeah, there could be more. Uh, could always be yeah. more, but at least you've got something that gives you. <laughs> A fighting chance. 
Yeah, I. it's been a while since I've looked at this code. I need to rewrite it all completely. But anyway, in here, it just grabs the picture and uploads it. Uh, and I'm pretty sure it's using uh, SSH to upload it. Or is it? It, it may just be using HTTP to upload it. Uh, Anyway, I don't want to take all evening, so I won't. Uh, I posted the, if anybody wants to look at this, by the way, I put the URL in the chat. So uh, if anybody wants to go grab this presentation and just look at it, you can look over the code. You can fix it for me. If, I've got to rewrite the whole thing. I want to do a better job of power management. And I also, uh, I've, if it loses the network, Sometimes it fails completely, and I've got to power it down and reset the cameras. And that's fine when I'm running around home. But it's not fine if I'm uh, uh, in, in Phoenix. So. Mm. so I don't know if you noticed the little flash in the picture. But yeah, the, cat, the, the little LED did, does flash. Huh. I mean, flash. I turn it on for about a, a second before I take the picture, take the picture, then turn it off, right? Right. So it's just a very bright LED. Well, Deed, I got to your website so already. So oh good. Yeah, that's so good. it's accessible. Okay, so I'm gonna stop the sharing and stop talking unless there's more questions. Very interesting. Thanks, Deed. That's uh, that was a good find uh, for five, four or five dollars, or five, yeah. four or five or six dollars. I, I was a little slow, Steve, at finding the the button to speak. But just a quick question for Deed: Is it only uh, still photos? Can you do video? It does do video. Uh, for this application, I wasn't interested in video, but it does do video. Yes. Cool. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. And in sharing. fact, the the library that uh, the uh, Arduino library, if you wish, that that uh, that runs it has a uh, a example problem that not only does video but it does motion detect. So it's it's pretty spiffy. As I say, that wasn't the application I was interested in, but uh, it would be, uh, certainly you could do that. Well, I would be interested in a group uh, buy on this stuff or in, you know, maybe a group project. They are available on Amazon as well. They're going to pay a little bit more on Amazon. Than, I bought these from AliExpress. But Amazon will get them to you in a couple of days. AliExpress will get them to you in a month or two. Or not at all sometimes. All right. Thank you very much, Deed. You're welcome. Uh